As some of you guys may have noticed on my Instagram and also here on YouTube, a lot of my content is focused around Star Wars 3 and 3 quarter inch and 6 inch black series, and that's because those are what I have the most of. I have a huge collection of both of those, and maybe someday I will get around to doing a collection video of those, but that would be a very labor-intensive video. Because some of you have requested collection videos and things of that nature, I figured one of the first ones that I could do was my Halo Mega Construct slash Mega Block uh, minifigure collection, I guess you could call it. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. Now, of course, this is not a Mega Constructs block, whatever you want to call it. This is not a Mega uh, Warthog. This is actually an old Joyride Warthog from Halo 2. And I got this at a garage sale for a dollar because uh, it was a kid's and the mom had bought it from another garage sale thinking it was a truck. And I knew what it was. She didn't. It's missing the turret, but I love this so much. I've had this for years. This is just the coolest thing to me. And at the wheel, we have a Mega Constructs mini action figure, I guess. Um, it's kind of hard to describe what these exactly are, but this was really just a way to segue into the video today. So here we go. Because these are all in the same kind of box where I store them, I figured I would talk about these really quick. Um, first off, I've got a Destiny 2 Mega Constructs character. I don't know who it is. I don't know much about him. He just looked cool, and he's also got this really nice printing on such a small weapon. I thought that was really impressive by their company, and so I picked him up on Clarence when Toys R Us was closing. Then again on Clarence, I picked up two of these guys. Um, these are the Call of Duty Mega Blocks or Mega Constructs characters. They came with some shipping containers, and I mainly just wanted the shipping containers for uh, some like 118 scale dioramas that I'm making. So these guys just really came along as sort of a package deal. I don't really know what to do with them, but they have some nice modularity, like all the pouches and things can pop right off, the knife can come off, and you can move it over here. You know, it's very customizable, the system that they built for these, and I like that. It's very impressive to me how small they've made these posable figures. They have basically the same hinge and swivel joint system that like a standard three and three quarter inch Star Wars action figure would have. And in some cases, they're even more posable than a three and three quarter inch figure. So it's really quite fascinating how much they've added to these characters. And in the same scale as roughly a Lego character, they have so much more articulation. I understand that's not a direct comparison though, because Lego really does go for more of a stylized look while Mega Block is really going for a accurate style where they, they want it to be more realistic at this scale. So I understand that. It's not a one-to-one -one comparison. I also wanted to talk about just really quick how well they've made these modular weapons. You can take off barrels, you can take out the magazine, you can take out the stock, and you can switch them all around. Um, the only other one that I have is this uh, s sniper rifle. But you can take off the suppressor, and you could put it on this one. You could take off the scope and put it on this one. You could swap out the magazines. There's all sorts of different customization options between these. And again, at this scale, it is really impressive that they packed all the detail into these. But, you know, I digress. This is about the Halo figures, and these are just the three that were in the same container that I figured I might as well talk about in this video because this is going to be the Mega Constructs character figure collection tour. I don't know what to call it. So that's what we're going to call it for now. So first up in the Halo lineup, I have these Marines here. These are the Halo War Marines and or Halo Wars Marines. I don't know. They're pretty much like some of the first figures that they ever made because they have the older style of articulation. They have ball jointed shoulders instead of the new upgraded hinge and swivel system and only a hinge at the elbow instead of the hinge and swivel again. So, so these are a little bit simpler than the more recent designs that they've created. They're really cool though and that's why I kept them around. I still love the design of these Marines and they're really nice. This one, of course, is kind of a kit bash. I just had some extra parts from figures, probably from a garage sale lying around. So he's actually got a Spartan chest instead of the Marine chest, but that's just because I didn't have an extra one. And then, of course, you got this guy who is just like the white repaint of this guy. He's kind of an Arctic Marine, maybe, or he's part of the white team. I'm not really sure. They released a bunch of different color variations of these guys. You had red, blue, yellow white and green and maybe some other ones that I am not aware of, but I actually like that about the line. You could get a lot of different color variations and you could mix and match your teams. 
I was never a fan of the bright colors though, like the yellow and the red and the blue, because it was just unrealistic. It was accurate to the game, but it wasn't a realistic Halo Marine to, in, in my eyes, you know, so I never got those. Next we have the first Spartan. Unfortunately, this is another garage sale pickup and I don't have his other arm. I'm really disappointed that I don't have his arm because this is my favorite Halo 3 armor set, the Halo 3 Scout armor. And it's really awesome. It reuses a ODST chest plate to kind of mimic the scout chest, which is totally fine. It's it's close enough. And then it has a custom shoulder plate and a custom helmet that matches the in-game character. And I love this figure a lot. I just wish I had that extra shoulder pad for him. So if any of you guys have a left scout Spartan armor laying around and you want to just send it my way... Uh, that would be awesome, because I really want this figure to be complete. I love it so much. Moving on, once again, we have a Halo Reach Spartan here. I don't even know what set this came in. It came with a Hazop helmet, or Hazop helmet, however you want to say it, and then also this Air Assault helmet. This was a really cool feature that they started implementing in the Halo Reach line, where you could get interchangeable armor for the different characters. It would allow you to make your character or your figure more like your in-game character, and as we get into the more recent figures in this video, you'll start to notice how well they've implemented it in recent years where you can really customize these characters. And I really love that about this line. This is also one of the first Spartans where they got away from this stock standard leg design where the Marines, the Spartans, everybody had the early, like, is it the Mark IV, the Mark V Spartan leg? All the UNSC characters had this leg design. And then here in the Halo Reach line, and maybe before, I'm not the best at knowing this line. I just really collect the characters. I don't even have any sets. I just have the figures because I like them. And if I ever wanted to build a set with them, I could just build it out of Lego. So these guys are really just for display. I don't, I don't really do much with them. But anyways, they, they changed up the leg design here, and they actually gave him accurate Halo Reach legs, which is cool. They've got proper knee pads. They've got like a pouch on the side, which was a feature in Halo Reach that you could add like a leg attachment there. And it was really nice. They upgraded a lot of stuff with these figures and packed in tons of detail with each figure and each sculpt. That's really something that people don't talk enough about is just that at this scale, the amount of detail that they packed in with each figure is kind of mind blowing. And you can see with this one especially, because it's the white armor and then they've added this black wash over top of it, you can really just see all the little details that are sculpted in to this mold and it just makes it an amazing tiny scale action figure. Next we have this UNSC ODST. I don't know too much about this figure besides that I think he came in like a multi-pack for the 10 year anniversary of Halo. I got this block with him and he probably came with a stand or something. All I know is that they made a bunch of figures for that 10 year anniversary and these guys are kind of rare or rarer than your standard figures. I just like it because it's got some camouflage painting on the leg there. ODSTs are one of my favorite character designs from the Halo franchise and Halo ODST was an amazing, amazing game. This guy basically just reuses the standard marine arms, the marine legs and has the ODST chest and helmet. I really dig it, and he is a cool Marine to have in the collection. There's another ODST in this lineup that is my absolute favorite, not because of the character design per se, but we'll get to that. Then we have one of my favorite Halo 3 armors, the CQB armor. This is yet again another one of those 10 year anniversary set pieces. They must have released a bunch of them and apparently they did them all in green because he's the same color green as the ODST. When I got him he also included this cool like trading card where it kind of gave a bio about the character and had this really nice shot on the back of him carrying a sniper rifle. I don't even know if I have the sniper rifle anymore, but I gave him a battle rifle because that was the best weapon to use in Halo 3. Once again, this is an older design. It's got the same legs as the typical Marine, Spartan, all that. But they did give him custom shoulder armor to match the in-game character, and the chest plate and the helmet, that's all custom. The same old school articulation though, but even so, this is a really awesome figure, and I just, I love the Halo 3 armor designs. Like I said, this was just another one that I picked up at a garage sale somewhere, so I don't really know much about what it came with. 
or anything like that, but it's just nice to have in the collection. Something also to point out with these older character designs is that they couldn't hold their weapons in two hands. They could only kind of nest it in their shoulder with one arm like this and be shooting down like that. You could kind of you could kind of get them to hold it like this if it was down, but they could never really grip it with two arms and have it like in front of their eye or anything. That's about as close as it could get. Or you could kind of fudge it and have them grip it like like that, but that doesn't really look good. So when we get to the newer figures, you'll see how drastically that actually changes and how they've improved their design of the figure and allowed for more articulation in that respect. And this is the coolest ODST they ever, ever made. This is one of the really early ODST drop pods. They made, I think, three of these in the initial release. I had two of them. I had this one, and I had the green one with, like, the mud splatters on the bottom. I don't know where that one's at. I don't know if I got rid of it at some point because I've, you know, gone through phases with my collecting and gotten rid of things that I shouldn't. But I had two of them. I can only show you this one. But these were so awesome. They've remade these since then, they've made cheaper versions, but I think that this is the ultimate version of the ODST drop pod in the Mega Constructs Mega Block design. You open up these side panels here, you've got two places to attach things, the backpack and, you know, whatever else, and then the front panel pops off, revealing your ODST on the inside. This one is the Sniper class, and he's kind of pegged in there. I don't think I've taken him out in a long time. That wasn't too bad. And... He also has a loose head in there. This head did not come with him. This was just one that I got in a lot, probably from a garage sale, like I said. But I felt like he could have switchable heads, so I leave this one in there because it does match in terms of the silver color, and it might be nice to have some variation at some point. So here he is, just the typical ODST mold that I showed before with that green one back there. He's got blue markings on the chest and on the helmet. He comes with this really sweet sniper rifle with the movable bipod. And if you are familiar with the lie at all, you'll know that this is actually a really nice weapon because it's got the painted details. Early on, you would get kind of a mix and match of different weapons. Some would just be cast in a solid color like gray or black. And then if you got a really nice deluxe pack or something like that, you might get a painted weapon. And I always collected the painted weapons because they were just, they were the coolest. You had different colors. This one's got yellow on the scope site there. It's just, it's nice. It's nice to have that little extra added detail. And then, yeah, you could have him laying down or whatever with a sniper rifle, and it was really cool. He's probably one of my favorites because this was one of the first ones that I ever had. I saved up a bunch of money, bought this guy and the green one, and then they kind of discontinued that line for a while, and when they brought it back with the new ODST drop pods, I just wasn't a fan because they weren't like this one back here. This is just the coolest ODST drop pod in this scale, in my opinion. It's got all the detail that you want, all the weathering. You could swap out the little pin here and make it longer so that they would have the drag chute extended, or you could just have it down like this and have it be in a resting position. It was just really cool. These came out right about the same time as Halo 3 ODST, and boy was I excited to buy these in stores when they first came out. So that's probably one of my favorites in this collection, just because it holds a lot of nostalgia for me, and it's just, it's really cool. And now, because I decided to do a funny little gimmick in my video, I just knocked over all the figures. So I'm not going to bother standing them back up. I'm just going to push them into a little pile right back here. Perfect. Next up we have this one. This is the Halo 3 EOD Armor Pack set. I'm pretty sure this is one of the first ones that I got with the new interchangeable armor system. So he came with this crate that includes the recon chest plate, recon helmet, and the rogue helmet. The armor pieces here are also EOD because right now he's got the recon shoulder pads on just in my little custom variation that I made of him. So as you might have guessed, this guy has fully interchangeable armor. You can pop the shoulder pads off and interchange them with those. You can pop the head off. And then you can also pop off the chest plate here and interchange it with the recon armor if you so desire. 
If you have other versions of this new interchangeable armor, you could also go so far as to slide off the thigh armor and swap it over with different figures, but they never included different thigh armor with like these armor sets, so that was something that you kind of had to do on your own time and with your own collection. However, this is a really nice design. I mean, again, this is all within roughly the Lego scale, and you get all of these really awesome options for super poseable action figures. And it just blows my mind that this is the kind of thing that we're getting in toy lines like this now in, you know, 2017, 2019, 2020. It's really incredible. And growing up, we never had lines like this. So it's cool that we're getting them now. And, you know, like I was saying earlier, just look at this. He can hold his weapon with two hands, have it up to his shoulder, and basically look down the sights with it. It's far more poseable than it ever was before and is really nice for if you're doing stop motion or anything like that with it. It's just so detailed and at this scale it's basically like a micro figure or a micro action figure. They're just so cute, so small, little tiny baby Spartans. Okay, so my camera battery died and I don't remember where I left off in the video and so we're gonna jump back into it but if it's a little choppy here, I apologize. It's just something that sometimes happens while I'm filming. So let's get back into it with what really is probably my all-time favorite set of figures. These of course did not all come out together, I picked them up separately, and I don't have all of them. I am still missing June and Carter of the Halo Reach Noble team, but man are these cool figures. So first up we have Cat, this is the re-release Cat that they just put out in one of like the single carded figure packs. Because it was like an anniversary set, she comes with a gold gun, which, unless you're playing Goldeneye on the N64, it's not that cool, so I need to get a replacement for that. But it's not a big deal, It you know, I'll replace it eventually. But here she is, Kat from Halo Reach, really awesome, they gave her a sculpted robot arm. Um, it's a little less poseable, like it doesn't have the hinge and swivel, but it does have a swivel, so that's nice. They've got all the little paint details, like the white markings here and on the chest. We've got all the good armor bits, and of course, just like with all the other figures, you can replace the armor with other female character armor if you so desire. It may be even replaceable with uh, the normal armor. I'm not sure if they made a specific mold for the female or, or not, but regardless, it's a really awesome figure. I'm happy to have at least four out of the six of the Noble Team members. Next up, you've got George, the tank of Noble Team. I absolutely love him. He's probably tied between him and Emil as my favorite characters in the uh, Halo Reach campaign. But this guy is super awesome. They've really bulked up the sculpt here on the legs and on the shoulders and on the chest plate to give him a really heavy look. He's much larger in comparison just by sculpt. Of course, he's not taller, but he is just bulkier overall, which is really nice. They captured the look of the character very well with this. And he does have removable armor the same way as all the rest, so he's part of that new system. I know they made an older version of him, and I think an older version of Emil with the ball joint system and non-removable armor, but I never picked those versions up simply because I figured if the more recent releases were going to be with the interchangeable armor, I should get them all pretty consistent because that would keep them looking the most similar. Then we have Emil, and he looks absolutely amazing. They've got the skull on his mask really well captured. He's got the little details on his operator shoulder pad there, his other shoulder pad here. The only detail that they kind of missed was the, uh, the sheath for his knife, but they did go to the trouble of sculpting a custom knife for him with a bent blade. I think it's called a kukri knife or something like that. I don't always know how to pronounce it, but it's nice that they included that as well as his shotgun. He's got really beautiful paint details going down his chest with the uh, ammo belts that he's got. The little red stripe there is even included. He's even got pinstripes on his wrist. I mean, the amount of detail that they included with this figure is just mind-blowing in my opinion. So, Again, I don't really collect sets, but these little minifigures are really awesome to have on a shelf together as a full team or as a squad of Spartans. It's just nice. Then last up in this set of Noble Team characters, we have Noble Six. This is just basically his default armor and how he appeared in like the trailers and promotional material. 
it's pretty cool. It's nice that they made it. I'm not really a huge fan of it just because this would never be how I look in game. So maybe I'll get together some Halo Reach armor pieces and I'll put together my own version of the Noble Six character. But it's still nice to have another Halo Reach designed Spartan in this scale. Again, he came with the gold weapon, so I need to replace that, but not a big deal. I really, really want to track down June and Carter because those guys are really excellent as well. I will track them down eventually, but man, I really want them. I haven't been able to find them anywhere for a decent price, so maybe someday I'll complete that line, but you know, as it stands now, I'm happy with these. They're really awesome. Also released in the same line as the Cat and the Noble Six with the gold weapons was the Rookie from Halo 3 ODST, and this is another awesome figure that I just can't get over. I know I say that with all of these, but it's really great. They got an excellent sculpt on the shoulder pad, the chest plate, the knee pads are even uh, ODST accurate. They gave him a nice backpack, and he is just super, super cool. Obviously, this is the player character from Halo 3 ODST for the majority of the campaign. I always liked his simple characteristics and how he was really designed to be you. He never talked or anything, so you really kind of had to fill the boots of the character, no pun intended, with your own personality and everything, which was a really nice touch. I enjoyed that. So once again, it's a really awesome figure, great sculpting, great design, but unfortunately I really can't stand these gold weapons that they included because now I've got to try and track down a suppressed SMG that isn't gold, and that's not going to be easy, but it is what it is. Again, I it's mainly for the figures, so I'm happy to have the rookie. He's awesome. And now we're on to the second to last figure in this collection. Sorry about all the sun glare. The sun is beaming through the window up here, and I really can't block all of it out. So just bear with me as we close out this collection tour. This is one of the more recent releases that they did in like the single carded pack release. The Spartan CQC with like the scout armor as, as his chest plate with a concussion rifle. This guy is actually probably more accurate to my Noble Six build in game than this one back here. So it's kind of nice to have it, especially because I love this scout armor in game. And probably for a lot of players, the first helmet that they ever bought in game was the CQC helmet. So that kind of holds a little bit of nostalgia there. But this is a really nice figure. The deco is really cool with the sandy tan and the brown colors, as well as the blue tinted visor. That's just a really nice touch. Amazingly, not only is the paint really nice on this concussion rifle, but even the little cylinder here rotates, which is really an unnecessary detail at this scale, like you can't remove it to reload it or anything like that, but it's just a cool detail that they even took the time to put that detail in there and, you know, just add it to it and make this figure all the cooler. So this is a nice one, and I'm pretty sure this one is in stores now, and you could probably find it if you were so inclined. It's a cool one to pick up. I basically pick up any Halo Reach Spartan that I can get my hands on, and this is another one to add to it. And finally, this is yet another release that's pretty modern. Um, this is the Black Recon Armor set. This was released in the most recent blind bag packaging sets that they do. I think it was like two to every case that would be this recon set. And I was really happy to find this one. Yet again, I don't know why they keep doing this. It came with the freaking GoldenEye Magnum, and it's just annoying because I don't want to track down more weapons for these characters that are accurate to what they would look like in game. However, like I said, this guy came in the blind bag. It's a really nice sculpt. It's basically the same recon armor that was in this armor set here, just in a black deco, which I think looks really sleek, really nice. I always wish that black decos were allowed in game. You could get them like in custom games and infection, but you were never allowed to make a truly black painted armor character. It was always gray or like a dark gray. Something to note, if you're ever looking at the blind bags for these figures and you're trying to figure out which figure is in the blind bag, there is actually a number kind of like embossed into the packaging on the back side. And if you Google something along the lines of like the name of the series, like the Halo Mega Constructs series, whatever, and then number list, people will compile a list of which number correlates to which figure. That's what I did with this one when I went to the store. I looked through the box of the different blind bags until I found this one. I think his number was 
well, it's actually a sequence of numbers. So it's a sequence of numbers, but the last two are all you really need to worry about. This guy was number 30, if my memory serves me right. And I was able to track him down by looking at those numbers, and I didn't have to waste my time or money buying a blind bag that I didn't want. So that's just a little tip for you. If you're looking at the blind bags, always check the back. The numbers will help you pick out exactly which character you wanted from that particular release. And there you go, it's that easy. So there you have it guys, that is the full collection tour of my Halo Mega Block slash Constructs uh, action figure, basically action figure collection. Not a lot, but I have all the characters that I really like, minus June and Carter for the Noble Team, but that's where it stands for right now. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll be trying to do some more collection videos here and there as I can kind of organize them since... It'd be really difficult to do like a full black series or a full three and three quarter inch video review because I just have so many to go through. So there would need to be a way that I could break it down into smaller chunks. And if I can find a way to do that, I will. So keep an eye out for that. If you have any suggestions, leave a comment down below and maybe I'll be able to do something with that. As always guys, link down in the description to my social media. You can check that out down there. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff if you feel so inclined. And as always, thank you for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.